Oliver was born in 2016 and it was his eighth day that we got him circumcised um, and didn't think anything of it, just a normal thing that we do. I have two other boys that got circumcised as well, so it was just something that we did. Did you have any information about it? Uh, just, any just a little paper that they gave me to sign for liability. Okay. Um, as I read through the paper, I was actually concerned of all the risks that they had, but they reassured me that it's only liability reasons, that none of that stuff ever happens. You know, it's just like medications. They just have to have you sign it just for safety measures. Um, but they reassured me that there was no, no need to worry. Um, so even though I had that mama instinct hesitation of, of doing it, I still just went ahead and did it. So they circumcised him. Um, it was a, a newer doctor that wasn't used to doing that, um, was fairly new in the practice. And so they did the procedure, they said everything went well. Um, we wrapped him up, put his diaper on him, and then I guess they were supposed to check him before they left the hospital, but they never checked him because he was sleeping. So they said, let's just let him sleep, let's not bother him because he was, went through a lot. And so we we're like, okay, I guess they know what they're doing. So we took him home. Um, we had about 45 minute drive from the hospital to our house, and then he was still asleep in his car seat. So we decided to let him sleep a little bit longer. I figured he'd been through a trauma, just let him sleep. Uh, about almost two hours later, um, he was still asleep. And I noticed I had this feeling like, hey, let's get him out, let's feed him, let's check on him. And so when I got him out and I took him out of his car seat, he was extremely heavy. And his diaper had felt like it had been in a swimming pool. And I knew that was something was wrong. And instantly I got that panic in me. So I took his pants off and it was filled with blood. His whole diaper was just completely closed in with blood. Um, it, was, it was scary, it was traumatizing, so immediately my husband and I, I was like, call 911, so he called 911, and the while, while he was calling 911, I changed his diaper, put a new diaper on, and was compressing his penis so that it wasn't bleeding anymore, and before the uh, ambulance got there, that diaper was filled up with blood again, um, so as I was carrying him down the stairs to, I'm getting shaky thinking about this yeah, trauma, yeah, as I was coming down the stairs, um, he was pale, he was limp, he, his life was just coming out of him. He was so, so frail. It was like he was losing his life. And I just remember praying so hard to not, not take him, to let him live. And so the ambulance got him, strapped him in and took him up to the hospital. We were at primary, um, not primary children's, we went up to a Ogden hospital. And we were there for about four hours. They couldn't get the bleeding to stop. Um, they had to actually ambulance him and transport him to primary children's hospital. Um, and thank goodness the ambulance guy kept that ambulance on air conditioning freezing cold and had his penis compressed the whole entire time because that is what helped to stop the blood flow. Um, and then they got him all, you know, he had to have oxygen um, for a couple days. They had to keep him for a few days there. Um, they said he was one number away from a blood transfusion, um, but he didn't have to have a blood transfusion, thank, thank goodness. Um, but it took a while. He, he was very skinny, and very pale. Um, he wasn't like the little Oliver that I had delivered. He was a whole different body, it seemed like. Yeah, he was very, um, very clingy for the first, just recently starting to detach from it, but he always had to be held, comforted. Um, so it was, it was very, very hard to make sure I kept giving him that comfort that he needed. Um, yeah, it was very, <laughs> very traumatizing. Everyone thinks it was just um, like a fluke. Like every once in a while, one in a thousand things happen and they're just bad luck, I guess. Um, the doctor didn't know what he was doing. Um, and then that's when I realized I started researching in and more things kept coming up. I was being educated more of how many traumas actually happen with babies, how many babies actually really do die or have deformities um, that affects the rest of their life. And I, I was really surprised to see how many babies and people go through such trauma just from something that we think is normal everyday life. It makes me really think even more so that God created the penises and everything that he did for a reason, whether you believe in God or not, you know, it's part of the body. So why would we need to cut it off to improve ourselves when it's there to function the way it's designed to function? Um, so it definitely makes me feel that we need to look at our medical system a little bit more. It needs more education and more evaluation and less cutting. Research what the penis is and what the functions of the foreskin because really there is functions and purposes for it being there. And so when you take a part of the body away, just like with any organ, you take a part of the body away, it functions less than it's supposed to function. And so between taking the part of the body away and risking that child's life, it's, it deserves some education, some research. Um, so educate yourself, research, you know, 
there's been times that when he goes pee, um, he'll say it hurts. He says his penis hurts. So I think it's an effect from the circumcision. Um, I think they cut too much skin off or cut too close to the vein. Um, so there is some little effects lingering, I think, from that. I'm so sorry. Anything else you might want to add? Um, no, just, just research. Um, have compassion for people going through this. Um, because some people like me had no idea, I wasn't educated, you know, this is something we do that we think is just a normal need to be done when you're born. Um, so research, educate, have more compassion, and, and love your body for what it is. <laughs> Absolutely.